Well, I am out on the briny again aboard High Sea Drifter, the 17 foot Wilson Flyer. Our company boat from the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I've just left the marina back there, you can see. Not many people down, I mean, it's fabulous, fabulous weather. 2018 seems to be the summer that keeps going on, and we will pay somewhere along the line a terrible price for it. But I'll take today. Wayne was out again yesterday, bought his boat thresher, trying to catch a thresher. No. Another guy's had about five trips. No. I haven't really had a drift. I've put a line out while I anchor. No. So the threshers are well overdue, the thresher sharks. I've got a little bit of chum in the back down here. That's all I've got. The last of my freezer clear out of absolutely apocalyptic bait. Some's been in there three years. I don't know. They've they need DNA testing, folks. I mean, there could be an unknown bacteria in there. I don't know. So here I am. I've got to go out the creek. And uh, when I get outside, I'm hopefully going to go over towards the Isle of Wight and fish maybe Sandown Bay, Dunno's Head. I've not fished here before, so I've got to try something different. Think outside the box. So let's get out there, see if we can't get some bait soaking done. Oh yeah, by the way guys, Wayne's out again today, a thresher shark drift. He's going to try a bit closer to the shore, he might get lucky. He might get lucky, he's overdue at the moment, he's overdue. I've got great faith in him, I'm sure he's going to come up with one, don't worry. Hopefully get some footage of it though, that's what it's all about. It's no good catching fish if you don't get any film of it. Doesn't mean the same thing, I'm afraid. As usual I will be fishing and filming alone so you have to bear with us for problems with the microphone, problems with camera shake, it's all there folks, it's all in there. It is amateur fishing and filming. Well, there's, also, well, there's already something cooking up here guys. I would say birds working, there's got to be some little tiny school bass working some fry and when I was launching the boat I saw the first of what I would call them baby white bait, fish about this big, maybe inch, barely two inches long. They were not sandals, they were small white baits. Could be a sign, could be a sign, fingers crossed, the mackerel are going to move. If that, if that white bait has come in here close, I feel the bass, well bass aren't a feed, I can see the birds around. Um, I feel there might be a chance for mackerel and I am desperate for bait. This is Southern Coast Guard, you know, clear channel 16, over. <laughs> You can see all the birds, the bass have uh, pushed all the white bait in close and the birds are diving on right by that bank. They push the bait fish up into the shallow water and that's where they're trapping them. And you can see the turns going down. Turns are always a good sign of uh, surface activity. They're after the same sort of white bait and sand eels as the uh, mackerel, bass, all those other predators. No good in here, let's get out of the deep water. Right, as you know, here at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, we do pioneering fishing, especially when it comes to big sharks. Now, I'm not really shark fishing, although I sort of am. I'm going to try bottom fishing. I've no idea how long I'm going to be able to hold here. I've never been here before in my life. I am just off a headland here. Look, just in there. I'm up here. There's drops and horrible stuff there. It looks flat but it's up and down like you wouldn't believe. So if it's easier if I point to you this way. There's the Isle of Wight in there. And there is in the distance, you should be able to see that, I think it's called Dunno's Head. Years and years ago, I'm talking 40 years ago, out here drifting was the area for thresher sharks and indeed poor beagle sharks. I don't believe anybody tries this now, so I've gone back to an old school area I've picked a bit of an ebb tide, I've known how long it's going to go for because the tides are peculiar here. So a chum bag I'm going to put over, I have one shot at this, is going to take the chum there, past Dunno's, out into the deep water past St Catharines. So there might also be a bit of bottom fishing here, but of course the very, very, very outside chance of a thresher shark. Now Wayne is also, a couple of other boats are out there shark as well I think, but Wayne's out there somewhere, he's fishing sort of an inch, he said he won't be a million miles away from me. 
but he's drifting, so the tide will carry him away further and further away from me. In fact, I see a speck on the horizon, it may well be him. Um, what I'm going to do is put the chum block out first because I'm in shark mode, rig up the shark line, get it out, and the chum, although it won't last more than probably an hour or so, might indeed attract a few mackerel because I am desperate for bait. Let's get cracking. Okay, I've double bagged this. It's what we call double bag. I'm just using onion tack so you can get those from your grocers. I've got my mashed goodies in there, bran, raptor oil. The big thing is, once that's over, and look at that, all those particles start coming out. Now I've got this one shot, that's all I've got. I haven't sort of really come shark fishing, otherwise I'd have about four of these out. Well, I'm just going to leave that, and it's going away in the tide. Hopefully my grapnel anchor will hold over this rough ground. I'm over reefy area, something different I'm trying to, it's totally different. I'm not drifting, I'm anchored. I'm in a fixed position. Man, look at that stuff go out. Look at that, I wish I had that off Falmouth. Oh, you have blues. They'd have a jigsaw cutting their way into the bottom of the boat. Lovely jubbly. That's percolating away. Already I've got a slick. Look at the ripples. The cat's paws there of ripples. And I've slicked off there. I'm more shaking to get my rod out. It's terrible after all these years. I'm probably going to blank. Of course I'm probably going to blank. But it's just that you never know with a shark. And we are really rapidly approaching, if not plumb on, time for Mr T. Mr Thresher Shark. It's a mess in there, isn't it? Who left it like that, for God's sake? Who left it like that? Come on, come on, come on, find the float man. There are the shark tags. So, the benefit being, what I was trying to say, once that bag's out, listen, I can... Oh, they're rusty as well. That's a week, guys. That's a week, look how, how the salt water works on them. Once that bag's out, I can relax. If a shark comes in, he ain't leaving me. He's staying somewhere around here for that smell. So really, shark fishing, easy peasy. The problem is getting the uh, the chum. Keep those handy, that's for cutting the trace if I do get something. Yes, yeah, what looking for. One shark float. Stick that there. This is an organized tackle box, people. I know there's a shark trace in there somewhere. I would never go to sea without a shark trace. It's not happening. There they are, my beauties. You come to Uncle Graham. I've got just a place for you to go, my dear. I don't know whether Mabel's going to make an appearance today. She may well do. That one looks good. That, by the way, is Strimaline. I just use Strimaline. Some tackle tarts have all sorts of weird stuff, expensive. Um, no, rubbing leader, streamer line's fine. Right, let's bait up. So, we've said this before. I put a split down there at the back of the shank of the hook. It's gone through the throat latch. So watch, when I pull that down, as I push the shank of the hook into the split there, the point will protrude more. Watch, there. And that's how I shark fish. I can also split tail that if I want, still plenty of ice in it. I think I'll just send it over it is. as it is. I don't think I'm going to need a lead on there. My target species would love to be a thresher in reality because of the closeness of that headland and the direction that it's going inshore, there might be an outside chance of a small pool beagle. Small being 80 to 150 I guess. Always lay the trace in the water carefully. Look at that go away. Man, I've seen them come right up to the boat and suck that down like a smarty. So now we're going to put this at the depth, which is secret, so I'll switch the camera off. Float set at beep depth. I'm not going to give anybody any information around this area for sure of the secret depth that we get the threshers at. They think they know, but they don't. <laughs> We only had five last year, which is out of interest, five threshers. I know of one uh, guy that had 11 years ago, it's about 40 years ago, had 11 in a season. Well, he was a professional skipper though. He was the top Isle of Wight shark skipper. He's now a commercial. What a skipper. What a shame he's gone commercially. My goodness me, you'd have found these sharks easily. So I'm going to run this a good way back. It's perfect. Look at that slick, man. It's going straight to the head. Now, this is only going to work for about four or five hours when the ebb's going that way. When it floods and goes the other way, then it's going to go up inside, I'm going to call it the bay, if you like, which is possibly not so good. There's a big drop and 
a current rip over there, way, way, you know, a couple of miles around there, around St. Catherine's area. So maybe that smell will go around there. I don't know how long that smell will go, but it's very, very good pace, very good pace. Right, let's get the, uh, the old bottom fishing rods down there. Don't waste any of this, boys. Look at this. Over you go. Lovely jubbery. I'll just leave a little bit in there, then if a shark does come around the boat, I've got a bit to sort of spark up the uh, area. Now, come to the big... Oh yeah, by the way, big weights in deep water. I'm going to try my concrete deep dropping blocks. We used to use these for six gill sharks. These are made out of... Actually, they, they do have names, these two. If you can recognise that. That's right, flower pots. This is Bill and Ben. Blah, 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 weed! Actually, most people that are under 60 won't know what I'm talking about. But anybody who knows what blah, 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 weed means can put it in the comments page. It means they're as old as I am and they remember Bill and Ben, the flower pot men. Don't worry, children, Uncle Graham's still, still fairly sane. Blah, 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 weed! Okay, I've got some really big bits of squid there, which I think are going to be good. Um, this is really heavy mono, it's probably about 250. I've got on there, as you can see, a half a mackerel, mackerel head, because there might be a chance of a conger. Quite a short trace. Little sliding um, rig here, look, like this sliding, but I've got in there just to point, if you don't want to buy moulds, I put a piece of silver foil over the end of a piece of copper pipe, and then I fill it up and put a piece of coat hanger wire in there. That's what I call an expendable lead. I don't like losing any leads, but at least this way, I'm not, you know, using moulds on you to look, and I can obviously see these I can cut to any length. Half that size, probably six ounces, that would be close to a pound. Let it down slowly like this, so that it doesn't spin up and tangle. I'm not sure what the tide's doing, it looks right peculiar at the moment. I can't believe it's this slack here. It should be, should be ebbing, but we won't know for a while. Feels like that wind's pushed me around, so it's definitely, definitely hardly any tide. That normally means when your legs are on the bottom and it's swinging around, it drags them into the snags. So I feel I could be losing a bit of gear here. Got to be tried though, people. It's got to be tried. Look at that sharp flow. Look at that sharp flow, boy. Just seen this rock go, just seen this rock go right under the bar. <laughs> what? There we go, guys. There we go. One of the rarities of the ocean, gonna be even rarer in a minute because he's going on a hook. A fresh mackerel, and all I did was put the uh, feathers hanging over the side of the boat. We do it all the time, sharking. Wayne's had about a dozen mackerel out there. Move that cord out the way, he's had about a dozen. So there you go. These feathers, I always say this, were hand tied by the top Mako shark fisherman I've ever met. Frank Vinicum's own hand. He tied those when he was about 90 for me. I've got two sets left. They're commercial ones and they are still catching fish. Thank you, Frank. I knocked mine on the head, Bosch, and I put mine in the cooler. I want to keep them chilled. Well, them, it. I want to keep it chilled, but I'll tell you what, it's a, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. So all I'm doing is lowering. Oh, the other thing was, because I do Paul Wiggle shark fishing, I used to do a lot of shark fishing, I have a set of eight feathers on there. Frank tied them quite close for me. The reason being, look, if I only have one or two fish that pass me, a shoal of mackerel, I've got eight feathers, I want to fill up, that's me done for shark bait. You don't need many shark baits. So that's the idea of that. But I'm also just dropping it just down the side of this chum, maybe 30 feet, something like that, because I'm pretty sure well, I don't, I'm not pretty sure, I know, we've been doing it years. The chum does hold them a little bit longer, so fingers crossed. As long as that chum lasts, the outside chance of a fish. This one I've now dropped down, small hooks. The boat's turned right round. What is this about? I've got the tide so wrong, so wrong. Wayne's nearly finished with his chum out deep. I think he's had Gernard, about a dozen mackerel, no thresher sharks, that he's fishing right over uh, the, the good area. And... Um, when it's slack tied, the chum goes down deep, so it's a good chance he might pick up. What I'm going to do here, I've been getting small bites on this. I'm going to put one of my stinger hooks on there and just keep it really close so that if a big fish comes to take the bait, he takes everything, and a small fish down there nibbles on it, at least I'll be able to see what it is. That's the theory. The stinger hook rig, or the stinger rig as I call it, 
can be very effective in a tidal flow. I've still got particles of bran because that's frozen. But this is what Wayne's had out there. You can burn through the chum pretty quickly. Once it starts to thaw out, it goes quickly. But now mine's heading the wrong direction. I want it heading up here towards Dunno's. The wind's pushed me around on slack, so it looks like flood tide. So I am six out hours out in my calculations. Does not matter. Sharks have fins. They can swim anywhere out here. This one! Oh no, it's a seagull. Come on, Smith. Come on, Smith. Got to get on the ball today. So I've got the... Uh, there's my stinger rig, as you can see it there. Tip to it a bit of macro and put that little piece of squid just there. I've got to lower that over the side. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think there's something on here, boys. I think there's, there's something on here. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? Now, not struggling, not kicking. Oh, there's a bit of kick in there. What the heck is this? I don't think it's the dogfish because I've got it way off the bottom. What is this? I haven't got my other lines, have I? It's gone heavy all of a sudden. It's not mackerel, for sure. For sure it's not mackerel. They're normally drumming. You get a drumming, vibrating tuna type fight. Man, I got me some colour down there. I've got small hooks. I'm on freshwater hooks here. It's just a very, very heavy sort of cod fight, really. I'm curious, what the heck is that? Pouting? Giant pouting? Is it a giant pouting? It is a giant pouting and another pouting and probably my shark line. Oh joy. Listen, I want about a pound and a half of lead. Let's see if I can sort this out for you. That is fresh bait. Look at that pouting. That's a pretty big kitty, that one. Bigger than my palm. Look there. Small one here. Yes, that's what there's must be pouting there. Listen, if there's pouting around, there might, might be conga. Let's get that weight in there out of the way. All right, the other thing, when, when the mackerel fishing is tough, and listen, it depends on the sets of mackerel feathers. You can get sold loads of them. These are commercial feathers. When the mackerel are thick, they will catch. When the mackerel are patchy, they're not so good. I've got to be perfectly honest, they really aren't. They catch pollock well, because they're quite big. They're heavy duty, that's what Frank uh, ties them up for. He fishes, wait for this. I think it's 28 on a string. It's like washing line. Yeah, the seagulls saw me catch those pouting, but what we do when the fishing gets tough is just to tip these hooks. These are big hooks as well. Oh man, I like their big hooks. Tip them with a bit of bait, and very often, either the smell or the movement, hopefully you're seeing this, people. So don't be afraid to tip your mackerel feathers. And I use, if you can see there, I'll take a little bits of belly meat off there. It's still going to hang over the side, but you know, so many times the ones we've caught, of you know, when we're fishing static like this and just using the, the rock, the rise and fall of the boat, so many times it's been on those baited ones. And I put it high up here, like that, so it gets the benefit of the most rise and fall. So basically, look, they're fishing on their own. I've got to sort this mess out now. Mabel, get your butt out here, Chuck. Sort this mess out. What do you think I bought you for? Don't keep sleeping under there, love. Get out that blue coat. That's my blue coat. Never be able to wear it again. Bloody women, they don't know how to undo these things. Neither do I. Well, it's a shame that chum's not going that way, but at least with those pouting, I've got a chance of... Uh, woof, 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 woof. Anybody watching this one here? That's a bite, guys. That is a bite. I don't think I put... I don't think I've put a stinger on this one. I think I might put a stinger on anyway. I'm not sure if there's a fish on here or not. Can I can only take a look? There was a fish there for sure. There is indeed a fish on there and it is. Oh sweet! Different species guys! Oh so, no I did put the sting on. Look, the sting has worked. He shredded the big Oh, be like that then. He shredded the big bait. Look, I just put him in there. Bang him on the head first, just to keep the uh, keep the greenies happy, keep the old tree huggers happy. 
He shredded all this down here, pulled it all down around the bend of the hook. Now I would never, no way would I caught that fish on this big bait and big hook. I got a stinger hook on there and he took that and that was a scad or horse mackerel. I will show you in one second, but being a bit of a mad fisherman, I've got to get that bait up there ASAP. It's like it's the last cast of the century. You've just got to get it in the water. People think you come out and have a really relaxing day, bobbing around on the ocean. No, it's work. It's, you just got to grind it out, keep at it. Something hit me on the way down then. Oh, oh I think there's a, a nibble on that one. That's a three hook paternoster. The lead's a bit too big. Oh man, scared, eh? That's different. I'll show him to you before I get involved in the fishing. It's good, but I'll tell you what this is. Well, no, Graham, you just told him it's a scad. This fish here is called a horse mackerel or a scad. And it is a very, very good live bait. Back hooked, nose hooked through the nasal flaps at the front. That, I'll tell oh, look at that. I'll put him there and he's like, that rod's buckled over. That is a marlin, I'm telling you that now. They call them a, a caballito. Caballito. In Mexico, it's a caballito. Closely followed by San Miguel. Dos cervezas, por favor, senor. That's too scared, please, if you please. Um, brilliant live bait, very tough. I don't think they're great to eat, but because of your survival, you would eat them. But that is really good bait. As are those pouting, they're going back over in a minute, probably with my big concrete blocks. And there's a fish on here. It's going from, from good to even better than good. Now I've got these could be these could be scared. Now those scared could be coming into that chum. That slack water that chum sunk down deep and it's attracted them, pulled them all around. As the tide pulls it up, because you can see the chum, the slick there, is going back that way, shark floats back that way, then gradually that will rise, the chum will rise in the more in the water, and I probably might hopefully oh look at look, 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 look. I know that's a stinger. I know that's a stinger hook. Look at this fish. Oh, look, two rods on the go at once. I can only wind one. Oh, it's another scad. I'm going to fill my freezer again with 1.5 fish. There he is. Look, three hook pattern oster, a lead, a piece of copper tubing filled with, uh, copper tubing filled with lead held by a coat hanger loop. Don't tell me it doesn't work. Here we go. Good night. Imagine if you did that with carp. <gasps> get, get, come on, come on. Faster, faster, faster. Good job Wayne's not here, man. He'd have his shredder be putting these straight through the shredder back out over the other side for shark jump. Oh, he's come off. Mabel, what the hell are you doing? You made that fish come off, love. I'll, t I'll take you in, I'll leave you on the pier, and I'm bringing Smith out there. Bloody woman. That was a good fish. I don't think that was a scare. I think there might have been a black bream. I've got to check the bait and the stinger hook. Both intact. Out you go. Bosh. Man, I've been made up of the shark line suddenly screamed out. Now going this way, I've got more faith in a pool beagle than I have for a thresher. That's the truth. But if these small bait fish are around, goodness me, it's not uh, an out of the window chance that that shark line might go off. I could get the other rods with stingers on. <laughs> wow. Little hunter coming here, sort of uh, might, might come good. Well, I got triple stingers. One, two, three. The shark line I've put up there. If you can see it, I've hung it, my shark line up there. It's good when you get a run here. It vibrates in this canopy. It's really quite exciting. I don't suppose we will, but when we go shark fishing, that's what happens. So, I've got fish on here, I know. These feel like pouting. I've lost a black bream on this one, messing with the camera. I put a sting on that. Look at this bite, people. I've missed a black bream on that one, messing around. There he is, look, look, look. Yes, messing with that bait. They're taking the big bait, chewing on it, and they see a little particle, a little bit at the back with a small hook on it. They think they've broken off a freebie and they scoff it. The bream look like they're a bit tricky to catch at the moment. Oh, I have bites on that one as well. Look, 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 look. There's a lot of fish down there, boys. A lot of fish. This could be... 
Hmm, got that, got that funny other line feel about it, which is never good. Fish coming up. Got my other mackerel line on. Where am I? And it's way too heavy for that tiny bouty. Sure, yes, I've got another line. I think I had a bigger fish on there as well. But even with these pouting, they make good baits. You can put those pouting back, but generally the seagulls, they float. Look, they saw me catch that fish and they've taken off with some enthusiasm. But I'm short of bait. I do love a good tangle with braid. You've got to love braid, haven't you? Horrible stuff, but very efficient with bites. Now that's all I've got. Three hooks I could do with a lighter lead. I haven't got any lighter lead, so I've got to make do with the lump. Yeah. Bosh. Oh, look, 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 look. That's a, the really, really sharp bites I feel are bream. Come on, fish. Be nice to show these people a bream. And of course, the same old principle. The tide's picking up all the time. Just got to raise that rod, lower it fast, until you feel that lead hit the bottom. There. It's easy with that sharp line up the top, so I can then watch th my three rods here. Come on, you fish. I need some more limp nibblers. Won't be using these concrete blocks yet. I have lost one good set of gear. So if I lose many more, shouldn't be too bad where the tide's turned like this, everything's laying nice and straight, the boat's pulled tight, should be okay. I've got the wind with the tide, I should be lovely and straight. There's my chum slick all the way, all the way back there. Make sure that one's on the bottom. I'm just constantly moving. That wasn't on the bottom, see? If you get them on the bottom, that's because the tide's picking up. Shake the bag. Chance of a shark, you never know. What a day, folks. What a day. Hopefully my anchor, my grapnel anchor, I put that on. I didn't fancy my uh, nice expensive Bruce and chain going down the reef here because nobody's told me what this is like, how snaggy it is. It looks pretty snaggy on the sounder. I, you know, a grapnel, A, I can afford to lose, and B, it normally will break and trip out. Got cable ties on it. <coughs> there we go. Look, 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 look. Nibbly, nibbly, nibbly. Just going to try and induce a take. Look at this one, guys. That was more of a pouting bite. It's quivering, shaking. The sharp rattles are generally bream. It's just an interesting way of fishing. With the stinger, I put a stinger rig out there. You know, they're, they're fish you wouldn't ever probably catch because your bait and hook's too big. So you're using the big bait, A, to attract big fish. If there's no big fish, whoa, look, you get a few extra bits of action and smaller fish and make the day worthwhile and you save the blank. Look, 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 look. As I go to touch it, as I go to touch it. Got him this time. Another thing, you're fighting fish on braid, remember there's no stretch in it. So don't go mad with the fish because you can easily, if it's got a small hook hole, tear the hook. That's what I, I've had happen uh, with the bream I lost earlier. I've got this down as this might be a black bream. Very small, very nice just to show you people another species from a mark. A secret mark, I'm calling it the pip. Now it's spinning. Is that a bream? It looks breamy to me. It is indeed a black bream. And it's not taking the sting, it's taking the bit, how in God's name has it got that huge hook in his mouth? Let me show him to you. There you go. Pretty little bream, he's going to go back obviously. Don't spike me please. And if they're down there, that's what's shredding the baits. And they are ideal for that stinger rig. He nearly had me. People, I'm panicking, got big fish on, big fish on. I hope he stays on, I've got him off the bottom. I'm going to clip up. I'm hoping he's still there. I was just winding the small one up. Oh, oh, there's pressure on it. This, this is a decent fish. I've no idea what it is, but it's big.
gave me a lot of kicks and twangs as well this one so I'm figuring it's not a ray do you know what I struck at it thinking it was on the stinger hook and it was a small fish it's gone very quiet on me now but initially it went absolutely crackers I'm gonna move this rod over so it's just rigging the stinger up hoping you're getting the action boys just fancy this mark I'm calling it the pip there's a little circular pip on the chart and do you know what I just fancied it no 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 listen I'm not saying and I don't want to put out there that Graham fancies pip I fancy fishing on the mark I've caught called pip I want to see this fish buddy I want to see this I'm doing it very very smooth there might not be too many bites of the cherry today boys I want to see that mackerel line go what the heck is this is that a big ray my god it's bloody huge it's a big ray okay spinning in the tide hell of a bite it gave me look 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 look, look. bite on the other one look at this ray planing in the tide so an undulate i think can't see this distance they spin and spin and spin in the tide look at that fish eh I'm going to twist my line up now. What are you going to do, Graham? I'm going to move this one over there. Yeah. The fun of fishing and filming alone. It can only happen on the totally awesome fishing show. So nice to find a new fishing mark. Nobody else is on it. What a good job I bought those big leads as well. That's mackerel and squid combo. I had him on there. Sorry it's taking me time to get it boys, I don't want to lose it for you. That is one frisky, frisky ray. Look at him go, he gave me a hell of a bang fighting. Initial hookup. Here he comes. Don't want to lose it. Oh beauty. Oh, 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 oh. Well, well, well. What do we have? Mackerel, pouting, scared, and a nice big microphone lead for Michael. Let's get him up. This is a nice ray. Man, he was frisky. Look at this one, boys. <laughs> That's a beaut. And just as a point of interest, he says, looking for the pair of pliers, he hasn't taken a stinger hook, he's just taken the big hook. So there is the principle of the stinger. The fact that you can catch big fish on the big bait. Small, oh God, I tell you what, it's a 10 pounder. Small fish on the small hooks to keep yourself entertained. I want to get another bait down. Well, I've been having a few uh, smaller fish still. The tide's ripping. So it's getting near concrete block time and I've got another one which I, I'm just going to take a shout and say, it's, say it is on the stinger. It's a dogfish. So it's the fifth species I've had. Of course, a big old dogfish too. I'll bring him straight up to show you. See, something's been muller in the wonderfully designed mackerel head and pouting tail carcass big bait but he's gone for the small bait at the back so you can see he's coming right up the back of that big bait nibbling at it i found my little freebie there it works the stinger rig you guys should look i'm not saying all the big fish mean oh, i only catch big fish mate a lot of people out there just want to catch fish this rig for me is the one that produces fish I took great deliberation in throwing that out with the arms because another guy has moved all the way from there right up next to me here. Looks like you've got a small white orkney. It's a mark, nobody knows about it. It's just, I went like that, you know, finger in the map type of thing. No, 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 he's seen something from a distance. Yellow boat, let's go fish near that. Makes no difference to me, but I've got the chum bag down, which I must shake. Right, rebate stinger. Well, I've had to move in shore, guys. It was ripping over there. My anchor kept uh, dragging and tripping uh, because it was so uh, fast a tide. So I've come in shore. Just have a quick point over there. I've got it balanced on the cabinet here. You can see right close to land there. Dunno's head way up the front there. So just coming close, trying to get out of that tide. And these are small tides. I would imagine big spring tides, it's impossible to fish around here. 
I've got my mackerel line dragging out there, just in the current, just hanging there. But it's not good in a fast tide, it's better on a drifting boat, because the boat's rocking like this. So where I've got those rod holders out to the side, it's constantly doing this. And that, you know, you can have two mackerel lines like this, working away, and you don't even have to hold the rods. So, uh, what I am down to, I'll tell you now, because of these big tides, I'm going for, if that doesn't fall off of my toe, my concrete deep dropper. It's my Bill and Ben the flower pot men. I don't know whether it's Bill, I don't know whether it's Ben. Let's put him in the water and see if he can swim. This one definitely should hold bottom. Of course, whether there's any fish in here close in, I don't know. I like it with just a dying tide, either ebb or flood, or the start of a rising tide. Either way, just the dying embers either way of the tide. I like that. When it's ripping full bore, never really done so good as when the tide does ease. Even though with big blocks like this concrete block I just dropped down. And of course it's expendable. It's got to be a lot cheaper to make those than it has to make leads. What would you sooner lose? Two pound of lead or double handful of uh, wet concrete? Ben is on the bottom. I can't swim, I can't swim. You'll be all right, don't worry. Hold your breath for half an hour. Well, I'm nearly burned out on the old chum here. Wayne's, uh, Wayne's had to go in, he's burned all his chum out. And listen, no chum when you don't have the chum in the water, just pack up and go home. The chance of catching a shark in the UK is pretty remote without that smell in the water. Listen, you go places, I've done it loads of times in Florida, you can just use the bait. You don't necessarily need the chum. There's so many sharks are everywhere eating everything. So easy peasy in the Florida Keys, up all up and down the Florida coast, loads of sharks. In our country, we have to work a lot, lot harder for them. Heavy duty chumming does work. And of course, we have to wait a long time for the fish. I'd say I've got maybe an hour's worth of chum left. Oh, I thought I saw a little tap on that one. I've gone from those whole pouting and half pouting to back to my old squid bait. Not old squid, the new squid. And do you know what? I've got a feeling I've got to get more of that for next year. It's been so good this year for me. And I'm sure what I'm going to do when this tide does die, if it doesn't do it, if I don't do any good here, and I may not, I'm going to go down by those white cliffs down there. On the way running up here to Allstone, I run over a really nice piece of rough ground. And I've got a grapnel anchor, I want to show you that as well, for using over rough ground. Yeah, I just saw it again. Little tap, there it goes, tap on that rod there. I'm going to give him a little bit of line. I don't want to go too far, yank the camera off the stand. Just give him a little bit of slack there. Quite a fair wind now, so looks like a southwesterly. Check the compass 180 southerly. 180 is a due south. That to me is the heat in land calling that convection. I've talked, you know, the lifting of convection air. So a due southerly, I feel, is where they've given, I think, 32 degrees in London today. Wow. There's definitely a fish biting on this one. I kind of like to get a few more black bream. Of course, the benefit of having that lovely bench there when it goes really quiet like this. I've got the reels on the ratchet so I can hear them like this is to tuck my bait ball under there, dust off here, find myself in here, some form of headrest. Now, there's a very, there's a very nice headrest. If anybody wants to purchase those, look on the site. Mike says we're doing clothing now. It's going on the site of TA Outdoors and TA Fishing. I believe it's called TA Official. If you do need any clothing like that, check it out. There's me saying, well, we don't sell anything. Uh, we're not just, well, now we are, because people have said it's ridiculous that we keep funding all these films ourselves. And people do want to help. So if you want to help, if you want some clothing, you buy some clothing, you get something for your money, hopefully. Well, hopefully you do. You wouldn't like to pay the money and just have an empty envelope come through the door, would you? Come on, fish. I feel it's the state of the tide. Oh. 
Well, it's blown up pretty badly. I think all the other boats gone in, guys. It's, uh, I don't know, three to four-ish now, southerly. So when the tide ebbs, I really don't need to be in this area by this headland. So I've pulled the anchor up. I'm going to show you which one it is. It's a grapnel anchor. Hopefully you can hear this in the wind. I'm going to turn that way, try and shield it a bit. It's a grapnel anchor. It's made out of a piece of scaffold tube here. Chain there, bolted through here. And this is just threaded stud work. We just call it stud work. With nuts there. And then just bend little bits on the outside there. And it's tripped here with cable ties on the chain. So nothing unusual there. That's fairly standard for grapnel ankle, anchor. Grapnel ankles? Who's got grapnel ankles? got bent knees but and I've got this wait for this because this is for my expendable fireman's hose reel type of uh, setup if I want to drop a, a grapnel or disposable anchor um, one I can afford to lose I use 10 mil polyprop cheap as chips I cut down I cut down the, the edges of this um, old garden hose reel which enables me to just wind everything on. I've got it up on the bow at the moment. I'm just going to wind it down. You can see how easy this is operating on your own. You can have it down here in the deck. You know, you can put it all inside the boat and then coil it all up. And it's all, you know, out the way. It goes up the bow. I put it inside the locker there at the front. But it's much easier just winding like this for me. Look, look, there's going to be some hose pipe expert out there or anchor. Oh, there's always an anchor expert, isn't there? I've seen those. Listen to those. Just try things yourself it's all you can do try things I've tried this for wait for this years it seems to work it seems to work it works for me that's all I can say you might find or adapt a different way of doing this but as you can see it works I can just change grapnel anchors anchors if I want that's all ready to bring down now and all I've done you can get a it's noisy you can get a shackle on there which I've got and tie to it so you can take the shackle off or I just tie the rope to it that's it. Let's go and see if we can find somewhere else, maybe out the wind or the tide. A last throw of the dice, guys. So all in all, you see he's very close to pulling the pin time. And do you know what, even, even when it's rough like this, I've never really had good fishing. It's this, this is the dying embers of the, uh, of the flood tide towards the top here. The leads are sort of banging a bit too hard. It just needs to settle down. It's like all fishermen have something against them. Weather, tide, wind, excuses. Uh, we got a lot of those, haven't we? Let's face it. So I think I'm down to about a 15 minute warning. I think, once again, Uncle Graham is the only one on the entire ocean stupid enough to be out here with a rod still in the water. Oh no, he's up here. Hello. He's hopeful. I'll tell you what, I'll give him this. There, you can have this. He knows I've got grub here, you can see on the table. Well, eat it, you idiot, you're going to lose it. He's got it. Waste not one knot. <laughs> 